Hallelujah. Hello. I am Pastor Patricia Haber. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday morning worship. Pastor Hamer and I are delighted in bringing you the word of God on today. Our mission is establishing, empowering, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Our vision is through the teaching and preaching of the word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, and minister healing to the afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Abiding Faith Christian Center is located in the Great Lakes Business Center. That's 1428 West Court Street, Flint, Michigan, 48503. Join us for Sunday Bible School at 10 a.m. and Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. Everyone is welcome to our services, and we don't want to forget about our Thursday night Bible study at 6 p.m. Come and join us in our services that you will hear the unadulterated word of God. Well, are you ready to receive the word on today? If you are, let's receive our pastor, Pastor Rodney Hayes. Only three of you did it, huh? Is that only three? Anybody else know anything about what faith is? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, this morning we're going to be teaching a lesson called How to Be the Light in the Darkness. How to be the light in the darkness. Glory be to God. This came hot off the press. So I'm going to give it to you just the way it came. How to be light in the darkness. Now, the word light is defined in the dictionary as something that makes things visible or affords illumination. The word light means enlightened. That which enlightens and informs as reaching the mind. Amen? Light. Light makes things visible. Or it affords illumination. It enlightens. It informs as reaching the mind. The soul. So I want you to turn with your Bibles in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, as we go through this teaching call. How to be lights in the darkness. How to be lights in the darkness. Here in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse number 16, we find the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, making a statement. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse number 16. Waiting for some of turning the Bibles to get there. In Matthews, Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse number 16. If you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, let's read that verse of scripture out loud together. Ready to go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now notice what Matthew 5, 16 says. Now, and my Bible is written in the red, which indicates that this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is the head of the church. He's the one whom God raised, far, raised up far above all principalities, powers, mights, dominions, every name that is named, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies, and has placed all things under his fate, feet, his fate, on his feet, and made him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his what? The church is what? The church is to Jesus. What is the church? The church is his what? The, body. the church is his what? The body. He is, it is his body. The church is his body. Has raised him up and made him sit on the, uh, on, and raised him up and made, far above all principalities, powers, and might and, gave, and, and made him be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness that filleth all in all. So the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, said, let your light so shine before who? Men. Before who? Men. He didn't say let your light shine before angels. He didn't say let your light shine before demons. He didn't say let your light shine, you know, whatever. He said let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see. That they may what? See. 
that they may see. To see something is to, to observe, to ascertain, to has, have visual perception of. All of these different things, not just visual perception, but hearing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hearing, seeing, sometimes feeling, sometimes smelling. Amen. I mean, all the senses. So he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see. Men may see, not God. And this verse of scripture is not talking about God seeing something. He's talking about men seeing something. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see. That they may see what? Your good works. What kind of works? Good works. Now notice he said good works. That's a descriptive adjective word. He didn't say that he may see your works. Because if he said that they may see your works, then there would be just any kind of work that you may be producing. And some of it may not be good works. Can you say amen? He said that they may see your good works. What kind of works? Good works. Good works. Mm -hmm. God, God wants men to see you, the Christian, the believers, good works. Then he tells you why. Let's read the latter part of that verse of scripture out loud together. He says that may see your good works and what? Glorify, Glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, God has need of you... Letting your light shine that men might see your good works so that men might glorify the Father which is in heaven because of your light shining through your good works. Isn't that good? Yes. How to let your light shine in the darkness? Well, let's look at some other scriptures here. Go to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter. Let your light, let your light. You know, some people are always letting their mouth. They're, they're quoting scriptures. You know, they're saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. I mean, they're extremely visible. Or uh, they're, they're, they're extremely audible. You can hear them talk the talk. But when it comes to the walk... I have seen some who have left, left you seeing things far and in between. If you understand what that means, right? <laughs> kind of left you in the doubt. Kind of left you wondering. In fact, if you see the sinner looks at that, you know they wonder and say, what? Is this what a Christian does? Some of them just absolutely think everybody that way. Now listen, Philippians, the second chapter, look at that verse number 15. Philipp Philippians, Philippians. Chapter 2, verse 15. Actually, let's start. Let's start in verse. Yes, verse 12. Okay, Holy Spirit. Verse 12. All right, y'all ready? All right, little read along. Ready, go. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, as you have always what? Obeyed. As you have always obeyed. Come on, let's go. Not as in my presence only. Uh-oh, let's pause there. Let's kind of take a little, little tour right there. Not, listen say, not as in my presence only. <laughs> not as in my, he says, he said, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not just when I'm around you. <laughs> That's what he's saying basically right there. Let's read the rest of it. I'll, I'll stop meddling. Ready, go. But now much more in my absence... <coughs> Come on, keep reading. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Come on, read. For it is good which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blamed. Wait a minute, stop, stop. He said do all things without murmurings and disputings. And then he tells you why. He tells you why. Do all things. How many things? All things. Just the things that you want to. All things. You know, just the things that you want to pick and choose. All things. No, the Bible says do all things. God's word. God says do all things without what? Murmuring. And what? That's arguing. Arguing. 
fussing and fighting, debating, challenging. Let's read on. Verse 15. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the... Oh, there it is again. Let your light so shine that men may glorify... Let your light so shine through your good works that men may see... That men may see your good works. That your father may... Listen, he said right here. He said that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons and daughters of God, without rebuke, without rebuke, fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse, that says nation, but it may, in, another, in the part of my Bible, it has generation. Do we have a wicked generation nowadays going, is it, is you, do you kind of, you know, can you kind of see a lot of wickedness in this generation now? Or maybe I'm the only one just seeing things. No, this is a wicked generation, my brother and sister. It's a wicked generation. It is so wicked now, I, I even notice on the commercials that they're just throwing wicked things, wicked works, wicked acts in commercials where you didn't see it before because it's trying to desensitize you to the truth of the gospel and accept things as being normal when they're really not normal. I mean, it's like a sub, it's not subliminal. They usually put a subliminal message in there where, you know, you really can't see it, but it's there. But now it's just it's outland, it's just out there. You understand what I'm saying? saying and when it happens I end up turning the channel when I see it I say oh my god turn the channel it upsets me that much it 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 it, it causes my righteous indignation just to become angry I turn the channel when I see it just on a commercial I won't even watch the rest of the movie because of it because I know what the devil's doing we're in a wicked we're in a wicked generation and the reason why is because we're head, we're in the end time Jesus said it was going to happen. It was going to get more wicked than it was in the past. He said it was going to happen before he, can't, before he comes back. Are you listening to me? Yes. Before he busts through the clouds. Nobody's going to be expecting him. It's going to be like a thief in the night. Boom! And all of a sudden, the trump's going to sound. And ain't nobody going to have time to get ready. That's why you need to be ready now. <laughs> Well, glory to God. Well, listen. He says, before a wicked, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine, among whom you shine, as lights in the world. Oh, isn't that wonderful? All right, turn to 1 Peter 2.9. Turn, turn to 1 Peter 2.9. Oh, my, 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 my. Now I got this, I said this morning, I'm praying and I got this hot off the press. I mean, God gave me all this. I'm going to show you my notes. I mean, you, you, know I ain't, you know I ain't lying. But this, this is all this, I mean, I wrote all this, all this down. I got three pages. I mean, just notes. I'm trying to train, train my page. So you know it's God speaking to you. See that? Pastor Pat, I got up early. I mean, at the time I was wanted to sit down and get ready to write some things, there just wasn't nothing coming there. Just wasn't nothing coming up. Then I almost got worried and I realized, I said, you know what, the Lord knows what you need. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I put worry to the side. Went down and went to bed last night. Because on top of that, I was tired. <laughs> okay, now, have you found the first Peter, second chapter, verse 9? If you, ha if you haven't by now, you just look on with somebody else. Now, <clears throat> now let's read this first of scripture. Very familiar to many Christians, excuse me. And verse 9 it says, let's read, but you are a chosen generation. Now it's talking about you. You are chosen. You remember the scripture Jesus said in the book of the Gospel of John, uh, the 15th chapter? He said, you have not chosen me. Don't thank it because you don't chose. I don't found the Lord. No, you ain't found no Lord. The Lord don't found you. The Lord, don't, the Lord chose you. I chose the Lord. No, he chose you first. You are a chosen generation. And what's the rest of it says? Ready, go. A royal priesthood. 
and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his mark. Oh my God. OMG. Hashtag, hashtag. Look what he said. He calls you this. This is who you is, not who you're going to become. This is who you is. But Pastor, I'm not living that way now, but I don't care, but that's who you tell you who you is. And the reason why you may not be doing that because you don't know who you is yet. And once you find out who you is, you can start acting like who you is. You understand is, right? That means am. Are. Present tense now. He says you are a royal pre gener generation. I'm sorry, you are a chosen generation. A royal priest. A holy man and woman of God. A peculiar people, that is, you don't act like the rest of the world. You don't act like the sinner. You are peculiar people that you should. Say you should. should. Now the fact that the Spirit of God put in there that you should means there is a possibility that you ain't. You is not. Isn't that true? Huh? Huh? Now, the, even though you are a royal, gener a chosen generation and a royal priest and a holy man and woman of God and a peculiar per per people, because you have been separated. See, you've been made, you've been sanctified. When you got born again, you were sanctified. You were separated from the world. You were once over here and now you is over here. Yes. You are peculiar people. And you're supposed to act a whole different way. You're supposed to talk a whole different way. You're supposed to think a whole different way than what it was when you were over here with the rest of these people. Can you say amen? amen. He says that you should show forth the praises of him. Glory be to God. Remember back over there, we just read, we read back over there, I believe it was uh, in 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 uh, in. In, uh, in, in, in Philippians where it says that you should show forth the praises. What was that scripture? No, what was that? It says, um, oh, let your light so shine before men in Matthew 5, 16, that they may see your good works and glorify your father. Glorify your father. Now, he wants the people over here to glorify the father because of your good works. That's it. See, good works attracts people that they don't see a bunch of good works over here. When they see good works over here, which is not happening over here, then man, they want to they say, wow, wow. What are y'all Christians? Wow, y'all serve God? Yeah, wow, look at God, look at God. Because he know that you're doing it because of God. So he gets glorified because of our good works. Amen. Your light is shining. Yes. Not your mouth, your light, your works, yes. your actions, how you live, how you conduct yourself, how you speak. Those are the things that people are going to see. Now you can quote scriptures all you want, but it ain't going to mean nothing to them. They don't see no action on it. Can you say amen? amen? Now, 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 now. He says that you should show forth, that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness. You've been called out of darkness, my brother and sister. You've been called out. Say out. out. You're not in there anymore. You're out of darkness. He says into his marvelous light. That's where you are now. Now. Turn with me over to the book of John, the 8th chapter. The gospel of John, the 8th chapter. How to be light in the darkness. See, God, he, he's given us his word. We're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Can you say amen? Now, we have a church. We're not jumping over the pews and swinging on the chandeliers. You may be looking for, like, looking for that. Like that individual came in here and says, I don't see no choir. <laughs> you know, the, you know that, I mean, they didn't know any better. They, they just wanted to come. They, they thought they were going to come here to get entertained from a choir, you know. They move it with the clapping hand back and forth. And then the choir say something, and they lean down, come back up. Everybody in unison. <laughs> okay, John, the 8th chapter, verse number 12. Are you there? Say amen. Okay, let's read that verse of scripture out loud together. Let's read it. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, 
I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, look what Jesus said. He said, Jesus said, the head of the church said, he says, I am the light of the world. And he was. Because before he came to the world, there was nothing but total darkness. Uh, in the book of Luke, I think it is, it says, it, it, someone was speaking, it was writing about something that was written by the, spoken by the prophet and said that down in, I think it was Nazareth, somewhere, and it says the people down in Nazareth, they saw a great light. I mean, when I used to read that as a young Christian, I thought there was a big old light that just all of a sudden flashed from heaven. This big old light just flashed. But it wasn't that. He said the people down in Nazareth, they saw a great light, the prophet was saying. He was prophesying about Jesus coming. But it wasn't a blast of light. You know, like a, a bomb went off or something or, you know, a big old flash of a light bulb or something. No, the great light was the light that came into the world, which was Jesus Christ. Just that light. It was a, to God, it was a great light. And it is a great light. Amen. And that's what the scripture was talking about. Anybody remember reading that over in Luke? So the people, people down there saw a great light. Nobody remember that? I'll find it later on and I'll give it to you. I promise. Okay. Now look what he says right here. He says in this verse of scripture, he says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have. Say have. have. Say say have. have. Have the light of life. The light of life. The light of life. The light of life. He said, they that believe on him shall have the light of life. In him was life, and the life was the light of the world. In the book of John, the gospel of John, the first chapter. In him was life, and the life was... Turn, turn over there. Turn to John, the gospel of John. You and John already, right? Turn to the first chapter one. Oh, my, 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 my. Glory be to God. John, the first chapter. In verse number John, first chapter, verse number one. one. Oh, my, my, my. <coughs> in fact, we'll start at verse number one. It says in verse number one, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Let's read verse four out loud together. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. Let's read verse five. And the light shineth in, and the darkness, oh my God, OMG, hashtag, hashtag. And the light shined in darkness. What was the darkness at? Was it talking about the sun had, wasn't out and there was no stars and no moon anymore? No, no. It's talking about the darkness in the hearts and minds of men. It was talking about the darkness that was on the minds and the hearts of men. All men had fallen into darkness when Adam and Eve committed high treason in the Garden of Eden. Darkness is synonymous with death. Spiritual death. Physical death is synonymous with spiritual death. And the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness didn't understand it. That's why when you talk to a sinner, they don't understand what you're talking about when you're talking about the things of God. Oh yeah, we had a move of the Spirit in the service. Oh, the Spirit was just, oh man, I mean just signs and wonders. They'd be looking at you, what is wrong with them? And they thinking you strange, but actually they're the ones strange. Because all they see is what's in the natural. And they don't realize that, what was in the, that what's in the natural that they observe and they see and they taste and smell and hear. It was created by the spiritual world. It was created by the light. Oh my God. Ah, Masi, Kedi, Boronara. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. It is only by light that you can dispel darkness. Now, this came from the Holy Spirit this morning. 
It is only by light that you can dispel darkness because darkness is a result of the absent of. It contains nothing. Shall I read that again? You want me to read that again on Facebook? Okay. It is only by light that you can dispel darkness because darkness is a result of the absent of. It contains nothing. Light is the result of an existing force. Turn to 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5, so that we can va va validate this by the gospel. Because I'm not here trying to impress you, give you my opinion, my thoughts, and what I think and what I feel. I'm here to take you to the green pastures beside the still waters. I'm here to reveal the truth to you. First John. What chapter did I say? One and five. One and five. The epistles of John. Back over there by the book of Revelations. First John one and five. When you find it, say amen. amen. All right. I got a whole lot of amens out of there, but I'm still going to pause. First John chapter one, verse number five. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Are we there? Hallelujah. I want to wait till everybody get to the green pastures beside the still waters. This is too important. Just to just, just take, just, just run on with it. Oh, my, my, my. All right. First John chapter 1, verse number 5. Notice what the Holy Spirit says through the Apostle John. Let's read this together. Ready, go. This then is the message which you have heard of him... And declare unto you that God is, and in him is, God is, and in him is no darkness at all. Now remember that the Bible says that God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the God of eternity. With him there is no beginning. With him there is no past. He dwells in one eternal now. It was by him, the creator himself, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which were perceived by the physical senses were not made by the things which are perceived by the physical senses or the things which do appear. Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 3. Go back to the book of Genesis if you haven't read it. It says in Genesis, the first chapter, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and there was darkness upon the earth, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said, Let there be, and there came light. Light came upon the darkness, and light caused the darkness. To have light, light overcame darkness, dispelled darkness. What did it say? It says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. No darkness. No darkness. Isn't this good? It's straight from heaven. He sent his word to heal them. He sent his word to deliver them from destructions. Can you say amen? amen. Okay, now let's go. We're going to go to another place according to God's word it says that we are the children of light and the children of the day go with me to Ephesians the fifth chapter go to Ephesians the fifth chapter and we want to look at verses one and two Actually, we go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 5 first, and then we're going to go to Ephesians. I'm sorry. 
go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 first, and then we're going to go to Ephesians. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for his holy written word. This is the message which we heard of him, him meaning Jesus. And we declare this message unto you, the apostles wrote, the apostle John write, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Anytime you see darkness, anytime you see the works of darkness, don't ever at attribute it to the work of God. You know, the insurance companies say, well, that was an act of God, but some catastrophic situation ha happens. Storm comes in and destroys everything. Oh, that was an act of God. In fact, they used to put it in the, in the insurance policy. That wasn't nothing but a lie from the pits of hell. Have you found 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? Verse number 5, if you have, say amen. amen. If you haven't, say, oh me, I'm getting there. Oh, nobody's saying, huh? You don't want me to say, hurry up, slowpoke. Okay. Get smart. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 5. Let's read that verse of scripture out loud together. Ready to go. You are the, all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of dark. Whoa, did you see that? Did you see that? He says, you are all the children of light. God is light. And you are children of the day. We are not of the night or nor of darkness. He's talking about you and I. He's talking about us and winds. All of us. Y'alls. You understand? Somebody understand me, amen? If anybody, anybody, don't know, if anybody don't know no English, then you understand, amen? If you're an English major, you still understand, amen? Because I did say are, is, amen? Ams. Yeah, you, you're a child of the light. You're not a ch How are you going to be a child of the light and act like somebody in darkness? I don't understand that. Oh, yes, I do, because your mind is not renewed with the word of God. You have learned how to walk after the inward man instead of the outward man. Can you say amen? amen. It's just the truth. But see, that's what makes you free is the truth, doesn't it? Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? Yeah. You are the light. You are children of the light. Chillings. Offsprings. Amen? amen? Now let's go over to another verse. Let's go down and go to Ephesians. I said Ephesians. You found Ephesians already, right? Because you knew I was going there. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. See, he says, you are all. Now, you know what? It would be one thing if he just said, you are. We would think that Paul was just talking to the Thessalonican believers. But instead, the Spirit of God says, I want you to write it this way, Paul. He said, tell them this. You are all. Every one of you in the body of Christ are children of, the, of light. And every one of you in the body of Christ are the children of the day. And every one of you in the body of Christ are not of the night nor of darkness. You have been called out of darkness. And you've been set in the light. Not going to be, not when you get to the sweet by and by. When we all get to heaven, oh, what a day that's going to be. When we all get to heaven, we all shout the victory. But in the meantime, while we down here, we're going to be crying and we're going to be so terrible. And Lord, help us, please. No, no, you ain't read that in the Bible. I don't know where you get it from. I don't know where that hey, I, I don't know where that come from. Up in the lady back in the back row over here. <laughs> now listen, have you got the Ephesians fifth chapter? If you have, say amen. amen. I said verses one and two. Listen what it says right here. Let's read it together. Ready to go. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Stop. Oh my God. Whew. I had to catch my breath on that one. Be ye followers of God. God who is light. And in him is no darkness at all. 
He said, be ye followers of God. Don't be followers of Tupac. Tupac? What's his name? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I get it right? Shoot, I know I got, I know I got some coolness in me. No, 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 don't be a, don't be a follower of, of Beyonce. Don't be a, don't be a follower of, of, of Michael Jordan or what's the mother basketball, huh? Come on, Ray, help me out. Don't leave me hanging out here. Some of the basketball players, what's the names? LeBron, S S Stephen, Stephen who? Steph Curry, and et cetera, et cetera. Don't be a follower of them. Honey, there's nothing wrong with admiring their gifting and their skills. That's okay. Entertainment. But don't be followers of them. Don't be followers of those actors. Don't be followers of those politicians or those political activists. Don't be followers of those philosophers of the world. God says, don't be followers of them, but be followers of God as dear children. Because you are a child of God. You've been born of God. You've been called out of darkness. You're in the light. Ain't you? Sure we is. Now, look what the rest of it says. Let's get to, let's do the rest. He says, he says, and be ye followers of God as dear children. Let's read on. And walk in, ooh, and walk in love. As Christ, has, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Now, 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 I, 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 I kind of skipped here, but I want us to know, I want us to go back. We're going to go somewhere now. Because now we're going to, we, we, the title of the message is How to Be Light in the Darkness. So go with me over into the book of John, the 13th chapter. John, the 13th chapter. Be ye followers of God as dear children. Be ye imitators. Another translation said, be ye imitators of God as dear children. And then he tells you how to be an imitator of God, doesn't he? Because you're children of the what? Right. You're children of the what? Right. You've been called out of what? Right. Into the marvelous what? Right. Light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, that they may glorify the Father above. Is that what he said? Amen. Did he say that? Amen. Did the head of the church say that? Amen. He certainly did. We just read it in the Bible, so you can't, there's no denying it now. If you ain't never looked at it, focused on it, or read it before, you know it now, and now you become responsible for it. Too late changing your channel now. Too late, too late turn it off to YouTube now. Now, have you got to the book of John, the 13th chapter? Amen. If you have, say amen. amen. If you haven't, say, oh, me like me, because I haven't got there yet. Oh, me. Well, hurry up, slowpoke. Well, I'm trying to. I'm doing two things at one time. They only got one. You know, you know I'm kidding, right? Okay, John the 13th chapter, verse number 30, 34. It says, Be ye followers of God as dear children and walk in love. And walk in love. Being imitators. Now look what Jesus said here in John the 13th chapter. Because what we want to do is we want to learn how to let our sh light shine in darkness. So we want to read the verses 34 and 35. If you found the same man. Let's read together. Ready, go. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know he didn't bring that up. Love one another. I'm telling you, Pastor, I know so-and-so. They just hard to love. Them is some ugly folks. I'm telling you, Pastor, you couldn't even love them with an ugly stick. Well, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to have to do it because this is what he said. He says, a new commandment I give unto you. Let's read it. That you love. Come on, let's read it. Ready, go. That you love. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now listen, when Jesus says, 
He says, a new commandment. He ain't ask you to. He didn't say, you know, if you don't mind, you know, pretty please, you know, with some sugar on it. He, he didn't say that. He said, I command you. I command you. Command me what? I command you to love one another. He said, a new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another as I have loved you. Now, now, I wanted to bring that part about that. He says, as I have loved you. You know, some of you is hard to love. You know, some of us, some of us is hard to love. Some of us had some issues when we, when we got born again and we came into the body of Christ. Am I right, Sister Frida? Some of these folks had some, they, they, man, they had some issues. It was hard to love them. But listen, Jesus loved you. Jesus loved you. And you weren't perfect when you first got born again. Now, you may not want to tell on yourself, but I'm going to tell on myself I was hard to love. I sure was. I was so hard to love, man, some folks ran for me. Yeah, I love the Lord. Hey, I love, I was not witnessing. I won the loss. Laid hands on folks and they got healed. Even had the Spirit of God raise a little girl up from the dead through, through, uh, through me. God did it through me. Won many souls. Folks get filled with the Holy Spirit. Restored backsliders to the Lord. But I was hard to live with in the marriage. Because I had issues. But Jesus loved me anyway. After I messed up, got hurt, cried, tears like crocodile tears, asking to forgive me, he forgave me. He still loved me. He still loved you too in your ugly state. Didn't he? He said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Who gave you the unadulterated audacity to choose how much you're going to love on one another in the body of Christ. That's Where you amen. get the, the nerve? Where you get the nerve? How are you going to love someone? But you don't understand, Pastor. Jesus understands. He loved you. Let's read that again. Because it's in the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. You know, the book that you say, I love the Bible. In verse number 34, I'm going to read out loud. A new commandment I give unto you, not, a, not a, a, a casual asking. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And look, verse 35, let's read out loud together. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one. one there it is, that men may see your good works. That men may see your good works. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works of loving one another. And then, and then only will they know that you are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because nowadays, the world looking at some of us and they're wondering, well, they must be very religious. I understand you're very religious. That's all they see. They don't, they don't know. They have no relationship with you in the Lord Jesus Christ whatsoever. It's just that you're religious. You belong to such and such a church. You, you are a follower of so-and-so, reverend, apostle, prophet, so-and-so. That's all they know. They don't know you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because he says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, Jesus says. Because you love one another. You're the light of the world. Think about it. This ain't the time to be jumping over the pews and swinging on the chandeliers. You're shouting so loud you can't hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And that's why a lot of them do it anyway. <sighs> Clean my glasses off because... Somebody back there said, Pastor, I can be seeing them glasses, they're dirty. When I be sitting back there and seeing your dirty glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, listen. He says, he says in verse 34, we're going to move on now, but I got to go back to it because God wants you to see this. He says, when you have love one for another, 
As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this love that you have for one another, that all men, that all men, say all men. men. Oh my God. You remember that all back over there in that that other verse of scripture over there where where it says, it it, uh, it was another scripture that said all men too. Matthews, wasn't it? Matthews, was it all men? Let your light shall shine before God that, that, that they may see your good works. No, there was, there was another one that said all men. Where was that at? I'm looking through. I got, my, I got it written down right in front of me. You, uh, 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 don't worry about it. We won't go to it. But listen, he says, by this shall all men, all men, shall all men know. They'll know it. Because they can see the light. Listen, they will be able to see the visible illumination. They will, be, they, will, they will be afforded the illumination of light. They will be enlightened. They will be informed. Whereby it will reach their minds, their intellects, and their understanding. That these men, these women, they are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. They won't be wondering what church you go to. They won't, they won't be wondering who's, who's ch- whose church you belong to. No, they're going to say, these people, they know Jesus. They've been with Christ. Because he says, by this shall all men know that you are my, not your churches, not reverend so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, apostle so-and-so, prophets and so-and-so. They shall know that you are my disciples if, say if, if, if you have love one to another. Oh my, go to John the 14th chapter. You right there, you right there to, uh, at 14, you're in 13, 14, 14 chapter. Look at verse number 15. Now see, this is where the rubber meets the road. Of you letting your light shine so that men may glorify the Father above. This is where the rubber meets the road. Where you start walking in who you are. Chosen generation, royal priests, holy people, peculiar, different from the world. Ones who have been called out of darkness and now you're in the kingdom of light. This is where the rubber meets the road, my brother and sister. This is not church as usual. This is not stump your feet, clap your hands, jump over the pews and swing on the chandelier type of stuff. This is the stuff that he wants you to live 24-7 in the church, out of the church, at work, in the neighborhood, in the stupid market, in the stores, at the gas station, at, at the amusement park. Yeah, this is where the rubber meets the road. He says in John the 14th chapter, John the 14th chapter, we we'll to look at verse number 15. I want you to read verse number 15 out loud to me together. Ready, go. Now this is in in my Bible that's written in the red. See red? Red means this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said to the the people then, and and he he said it to us today because the Bible is written to us. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now one of his commandments was, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. Even as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. If you keep my. If you love me. Keep my commandments. If. I love the Lord. Lord I love the Lord. Pastor I love the Lord. Oh I love you Jesus. I love you Jesus. I love you Jesus. I don't know why the hell for all that stuff today. <laughs> I love you Jesus. I just love you Jesus. I don't know who they think. They think they, they, think they something because they're on the usher board. Oh I just love you Jesus. No she didn't wear that today did she? I'm she, who you think, who, I don't know, what's wrong with her? Who oh, I love you, Jesus. I ain't going there. I, I don't like them anyway. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Why are y'all laughing? 
Oh, you know I'm telling the truth, huh? You know, hey, y'all know somebody like that, don't you? You know somebody like, I know it ain't you. You know somebody like that. Okay, now let's read another verse of scripture. Go to verse 21. John 14 chapter, verse number 21. We're going to read from verse 21 all the way down to verse 24. But you know we're going to do a little pausing right there, amen? You know, stop along the sight, sightseeing route and look at certain things real clearly. But we're going to verse 21, John 4, 21. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let's read that verse of scripture out loud together. Ready to go. He that has my commandments and keepeth them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He that has my commandments. He, he that got my word in him. I know, it, I know that word. I know that word. I know it. I know it already. Oh, really? He that has my commandments. He said, do what with it? Keep them down. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have the commandments. You know his word. But then he turns around and said, it's not just enough for you to know his word. He said, he that has my commandments, he must do what? Keep yeah. it. Read the rest of it. He that has my commandment, keep it. Go ahead. And, is that oh, wait a minute. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Did I read it right? Yes. He says, and he that has my commandments and keepeth them, doeth them, acts on them, he it is that loveth me. Not the one that raises their hands up in church because, you know, the spirit is moving in the service because of others that have been obeying God. And you just getting the residuals of it. And you just got tears in your eyes. I love you, Jesus. But then you have art against your brother and your sister. You have art against your pastor. You got art against the children's church worker. You got art against the choir director. You got out the choir because you don't like the choir director because they don't offended you. They don't hurt you. You didn't, you didn't get to do what you wanted to do. They didn't choose you when you knew you were the one that's both been chosen. That's the reason why you weren't chose, because you're thinking like that, full of pride. How did I get on that subject? The Holy Spirit. Listen, he says, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Let's read the rest of it. And he, come on, ready, go. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself and will manifest myself and will manifest myself unto him. He said he'll be you'll be loved of the Father, and I will love you. And Jesus says, I will manifest my power in your behalf. What is it in your life that you need? I'll get it done for you. Simply because you show me that you love me. Now you're going to understand why not many things are happening in your life. You've been praying and fasting and shouting and having all kind of folks lay hands on top of your head. <laughs> Some of your hair all fell out. <laughs> You don't have hands on your head. They don't rub some of the some of the strands of your hair out. I'm not talking about all of y'all. You know, I'm just I'm just saying. You know, I'm making a little humans. You know, you get the point. What I'm trying to say is something ain't working. And if you don't, you you trying to understand what's not working. God is trying to tell you this morning what's not working. Why it ain't working. Why it's not manifesting himself in your life. Amen. It's not the only reason, but it is a valid, scriptural, biblical reason. You say you love him. Have you been keeping his commandments? You say you love him. Have you been loving one another? Have you been loving your fellow brother and sister in Christ? That includes your pastor. Your pastor's your brother too. You supposed to be loving me. You can't get offended at me and leave the church because you're mad at me. Amen. Amen. I'm get myself in there too, bro, because be out here by myself. Everybody be mad at me. So it's okay to hate the pastor, but we gotta love my brother and sister. No, pastor's your brother too. Pastor's wife and your brother is your sister too. Whew. Okay, now listen. Let's drop on down. Let's read on down. And let's read with verse number 22. This sounds like some people in the church. <laughs> verse number 22. Let's read it together. Ready to go. Judas saith unto him, not as scarce, the one who betrayed him. Let's read it. Lord. How is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? 
How 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 you gonna manifest yourself on us and, and not unto other people? How how you gonna do that? You know, we're gonna question what Jesus said. Gonna question the word, question the the message that the man of God gets from the Holy Spirit to give to you. You gonna question it now? Now you're going to make up in your own mind why he's not manifested and going to come up with something and he's going to tell somebody else and get them off an air just like you. He said the reason why he has not manifested himself unto you is because you do not keep his commandments. You are not loving one another in the body of Christ. Your light ain't shining. And just because you don't say something bad, bad about him in front of them face... You don't act a certain way in front of their face because you put on that pretense. But then when you get alone somewhere else in the, in the confines of your house or maybe on the job with the person who works on the job that go to the same church with you and then you talk about that person and you tell how you really feel, you still have violated the word of God. That's what's called a hypocrite. Let's read verse 23 aloud together. Ready, go. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Now notice what, no, hold, hold on. We're going hey, we're gonna, to we're gonna do a little sightseeing here right now. Instead of keep driving down the highway. Did you know that he says, he, he says, if a man love me, he will keep my what? Words. Did he say Word. Or did he say, he said, words are word. Words. He didn't say word as singular one. You know, like you pick and choose what you want to keep. You're going to keep the word in the Bible that you like. Oh, I like that. I, I like that. Oh, yeah. Given it shall be given unto me. Oh, I like that. The Lord want me to prosper. I love that. He going to open up the windows. God want me rich. I love that. But you don't love the other part. No. He said keep his words. You got to keep all of it. Even the one that says forgiving one another. No matter what they've done to you. You're obligated to forgive. You can't hold on to unforgiveness. I know they were wrong. God knows they were wrong. Jesus know they were wrong. The Holy Spirit know they were wrong. The angels in heaven know they were wrong. The saints of God that look down by heaven, they behold everything, they know they were wrong. The devil know they were wrong. In fact, he was the one that made them do it anyway. And then on top of that, they know they were wrong. Yeah, you got a whole lot of, got a whole lot of witnesses know they were wrong. But you still have to forgive them. I said, you still have to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, he said, neither shall my father, which is in heaven, forgive you for your trespasses. You don't done some wrong, too. That's it. That's the word. But I didn't, do, I didn't do what they did to me, though. It's still wrong. And if it wasn't to them, it was to somebody else. Remember Jesus said that you love them just as I have loved you? Love one another even as I have loved you. Has Jesus ever forgiven you for something? Yeah, pastor. Jesus said he'll always forgive me if I ask him to forgive him. Then you need to, you got to forgive them too. That's love. Man, how did I get on that? The Holy Spirit. I told you there's other people watching this besides you, right? You're not the only ones hearing this message. There's people out there on YouTube. And Facebook. Okay. Let's read the rest of this. He says, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Let's read the rest of it. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him. <coughs> and <make our> <coughs> <with> him. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's read verse 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's 
That's called heavy, heavy over your head right there. Look what he said. He said, he that loveth me, he that loveth me not, 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 he's going to tell you who the ones that don't love him. Because you can say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, with all my heart. And sing it, man, like, with a, like, with like, a, like, like a, a sweet canary. But look what he said. He said, he that loveth me not, Keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which has sent me. Ooh, that's like heavy, heavy, hanging over your head. Turn to John the fifth. Oh, no. Turn, turn to John the 15th chapter. That helicopter. John the 15th chapter. John the 15th chapter. You sure, you sure your clock is right? I've only been speaking for about five minutes now. John the 15th chapter. Turn to John the 15th chapter. Oh my God. Are you being blessed this morning? Amen. I know I is. Even if I got to say, ouch, ouch. Oh my God. I'm still being blessed. Because the truth will make you free. Let out John the 15th chapter, verse number 10. Let's read verse number 10 out loud together. Ready, go. If you keep my commandments... You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Look what Jesus said. He said, if, conditional. That means that you have a choice. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide, take up residence, residence in, settle down in, have a constant, stable existence in my love, even as... Ooh, be followers of me as dear children and walk in love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Oh, that's how Jesus did it. But pastor, Jesus was the son of God. He was God. Of course, he can walk and forgive. No, the Bible says he laid off his deity. He became like as man. Did he lie? And pretend he became like us and wasn't really like us and had this supernatural power that he could be able to forgive and love people. Whereas he's telling us to do the same thing that we're not able to do it. If that be the case, throw your Bible away, leave the church, go back into the place where you started from in the clubs and doing everything else. Because there is no God and there is no Christianity and there is no truth. But that's a lie. He became a man just like you. And he kept the Father's commandments just like you're supposed to keep the Father's commandments. And as a result, he walked in love when he was on the earth. Amen. Nothing more and nothing less. Amen. Now, you, you cannot believe that if you want to. You have a will. Choose what you want to. But it ain't going to change the truth. You can pull the blinds down over the window and deny that the sun is out there. Black out all the light. Be pitch dark in the room you're in. I don't believe there's no light out there. I don't believe there's no sun. It ain't going to make it not true. It's still going to be out there whether you, whether you, listen, you're the one denying. <laughs> listen, let's go down now. Verse number, number, ooh, 10 to 12. <coughs> 10 to 12. John 15, 10 to 12. We're going to read on down. And then verse 11 says, and these things have I spoken unto you. Now listen to verse, verse 11. He said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments, abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Can you understand why you got these Christians walking around like they've been sucking on a lemon? <laughs> have, I don't know if you have seen them. Have you seen them? Man, they look like they've been sucking on the lemon. They, I mean, they are miserable. They don't smile. Some of them think it's being pious. They're being holy. But this, that's, not, that's not no joy. And you're, you walk around. Your joy ain't full. Your heads are. You're always talking about. You're always, having them, you're always talking about your problems and what's going on and how this ain't going right and how they cheated you here. I mean, you, you don't have no joy whatsoever. No, no power work in your life. You're struggling. This is the reason that your joy is not full. It's not because of the circumstances of life. It's because the choice that you made not to keep his commandments so that you can walk in love. 
Because he says right here, these things have I spoken unto you that your joy, my, my joy, my joy, which comes with the salvation, my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Let's read verse number 12 loud, loud together. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I rest my case. I got more next week. Got more to come. This ain't all of it. I got more to come. But I'm telling you what, this is enough for you to digest on, meditate upon. Go home and get on your knees and pray about it if you need be. Or if you're at home already, get on your knees and pray now. Say, Lord, forgive me. How wretched have I been? Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. And make a decision to be a doer of God's word. Can you say amen? amen. I don't care who you are, where you are. When you listen to this message, this message is for you. How to let your light shine in the darkness. Well, praise the Lord. We're at the end of our message this, this morning. Thank you for those of you on Facebook that have tuned in with us. Thank you for those of you on the YouTube that have tuned in with us. We don't take it for granted that every person that's watching, every person that's here, that they have received the gift of eternal life, which comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except by me. Well, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the way that you come to him is you have to receive him whom God has sent. The book of John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power or the right to become sons of God. You have to do the receiving. God has already done the giving. The way you receive is according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. It said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, he said you will be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want to lead you through a prayer. The prayer comes from the Bible in Romans the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10. You pray this prayer from your heart. You believe this prayer in your heart, and you shall be saved at this very moment now. So, <clears throat> so with every head bow and every eye closed, no one looking around, no one moving in the service, those of you on Facebook, those of you on looking at YouTube, Bow your heads down if you're not born again so that you can receive the gift of eternal life. Say with me right now. Say, Dear God, I come to you now just as I am a sinner. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sin and was buried and went to show. And on the third day, I believe you raised him from the dead. So I, could be saved. so I could be saved. I accept, I accept what, Jesus what Jesus Christ did for me. I accept him now as my Lord and Savior. Because I believe this in my heart. And I've confessed, and I've confessed with my mouth. I am now saved. I am, now saved. I am, born, again. I am born again. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. Thank you. For saving, me now. for saving me now. I am now saved. Am now saved. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The reason why we're enthusiastically clapping right now with joy is because the angels are rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that has been lost. And you have now come to the Father. We have a book in my hands called The New Birth. You'll find this book. Uh, you contact us at the end of this broadcast. The address on the screen. Call the number. And we'll get this book into your hand post hastily. Post hastily. Praise God. Now, I want to say that I am Pastor Rodney M. Hamer. And my lovely wife, Pastor Patricia Hamer. We are the pastors of the Body Faith Christian Center family. We want to remind you that John, the 15th chapter, verse number 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Woo, glory be to God. Man, was that hot off the press good or not? Huh? I'm telling you, boy, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See you, see you next time. Amen. Guess you got it. Amen. Praise God. A lot of people had to come out of the children's church over there. Turn to turn to Facebook. God. She is diligent, isn't she? She's doing she's doing dual, dual jobs in the church. Praise God. All right. Well, anyone needs prayer? Anyone needs prayer? All right. 
The Bible says in Romans 10, 10, uh, Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith comes by what? And hearing by what? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? The book of Corinthians, fifth chapter, verse number seven says, for we walk by and not by, we walk by and not by, simply means we walk by the word and not by the senses. And the senses may not line up with the word.